Hi, Alex and Nia. Um, I'm glad that you're here today and we can discuss some of your financial plan that we've gone through. Um, as part of this financial planning process, you've requested that I walk through um, what I determined to be the top three priorities in um, estate planning. And we will do that at this time, if that's right with you both. So to review your current situation, um, you each have a simple will in place, which is a great starting point um, for your estate planning. Um, within a simple will, um, you've left all probate assets to one another. Um, and again, that's a great first step that shows that you are taking the initiative and taking care um, to how things will go should you both pass away. Um, simple wills may also name um, guardians for your children. I'm not sure if you've actually executed this, but um, I'm assuming that you have it based on the data that I've been given. So we'll discuss that further in just a few minutes. Um, the first priority I recommend when putting together an estate plan is um, to consider carefully and um, very intimately with one another, uh, legally naming <clears throat> an appropriate guardian for your children. So at their ages, it's 10, five, and seven, they are minor children. Um, they're gonna need a guardian should anything happen to you both. As well, they're gonna need a conservator. Um, this is top of the list um, as far as estate planning priorities go. Um, the guardian and the conservator, they are different roles and I'd like to talk a little bit about those so that you have some framework as you start to consider this plan. Um, the guardian and the conservator may not be the same person um, when you outline your preferences to choose who would be most appropriate. Um, for example, the named guardian would take care of your children in a personal manner um, to, you know, uh, raise them and, and have them kind of as their own as you would, while a conservator will serve um, as a manager of the property or the assets left to your children, and that is a fiduciary responsibility. Um, one's more empathetic, the other's more fiduciary. It's, you can see how they may not be the same person. Um, so, like I said, it, it's it's not likely that the person you choose to empathetically take care of your children and their literal uh, physical needs will be the same person who is well versed on your estate, your estate plan and taxes and consequences. So just keep this in mind while you start to mull over these possibilities. <clears throat> um, I highly recommend that you spend considerable time outlining these roles and what they would entail. Um, as a personal example, my brother and sister-in-law are named as the guardian for um, our daughter um, should we pass away. So my husband and I took some time to really think about this and uh, not only are they near our age, so they're gonna have longevity as, as our daughter ages, but um, they have a family of their own and so, um, the ages just seem seem appropriate for us, for our purposes. Additionally, um, they are intimately involved in our family and understand how we intend to raise our daughter and, and hold that um, personally and important. So that was sort of an easy choice in that way. Um, however, um, they are wonderful people in our family, but I wouldn't choose them for the fiduciary responsibility aspect of a conservatorship. Um, for, for this role in our personal estate plan, um, we named a young attorney who is a friend of the family. Um, I know that she will execute the estate plan and understands our legal wishes and the uh, tax consequences that um, may be incurred from the estate. Um, she has a fiduciary understanding of the investments and the you know taxable consequences as our daughter ages. So please keep in mind these roles and that the nature of them is a little bit different. It is um, absolutely necessary to get them in place though should something happen to you both you want to make sure that you are controlling um, your estate um, just lastly as a, as a difference of those two roles um, you want to be sure 
as they're so highly interconnected, should they become necessary, um, that these people are not adversarial in any way, that they are, are friendly and understand and respect, first of all, their roles, but also then your wishes and your children's needs. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, Simple Will is a really great starting point for your estate plan. And I also recommend um, to contact an attorney and redraft the will to include a testamentary trust. Um, this type of trust provides for the distribution instructions um, for all of your estate and the assets, including proceeds like from life insurance, which you both have in place. So it's highly applicable. Um, a testamentary trust kicks in or turns on when you pass away, um, and it's for the benefit of your children. Uh, you'll name a trustee to oversee the estate and act in the best interest um, of the children as, as beneficiaries as it's a fiduciary responsibility. So um, this trustee will need to make sure that all of the assets are you know, invested, that it's properly executed and appropriate. Um, once you establish the uh, testamentary trust, um, I can work with you and would be happy to, um, to name the trust per specific trust language provided by the attorney that's within your will. Um, as the beneficiary or contingent beneficiary, um, and I can expand on that in just a moment. Um, as you can see, estate planning can be really interconnected. They're not just uh, single pieces of the puzzle. They, they create a big picture for your intentions. Um, when discussing redrafting your will to include a testamentary trust with an attorney, I would recommend putting in place a living will as well. So. Um, that will provide for healthcare directives, but we can address this further um, at, a, at a meeting at a later date should this priority align with your concerns. Uh, lastly, you provided me with information for the beneficiaries on your on your assets and your accounts as they currently exist, and this is very helpful. Um, proper beneficiary designations, while the last of the three priorities that I'm outlining at this time is the most important step for asset protection and estate planning. Um, the reason I say that is um, we need to get in place the beneficiaries to protect the assets, um, specifically if they're retirement assets. So um, not only can proper beneficiary designations um, in some cases allow for your assets to avoid probate, which is it's public, it's costly and time consuming, um, but it also helps to protect your intentions um, in leaving those assets to loved ones, specifically in your case, um, minor children. Um, but most notably is retirement assets. If retirement assets are left outright to a minor or an individual, um, the retirement eggshell can be broken. And what I mean by that is if you, if your retirement assets are within the eggshell of an IRA or a 403B um, and they're left to an individual outright, that can break the eggshell and the retirement assets come out and you can't get them back in. That triggers a tax consequence, which may or may not be intended for the beneficiary. So um, again, you can't control the level of like retirement investment uh, knowledge for your beneficiary. So as a way to protect those assets, um, a testamentary trust would um, allow or even mandate that uh, the portion of retirement assets named to the beneficiary be moved into an inherited IRA or a stretch IRA. Um, this would allow your children um, to draw on the income over their life expectancy, so it provides an income stream, but also provide um, tax planning a bit for them because if they were to trigger all the tax, they would be taxable um, on the, the full lump sum distribution, whereas they can just pay ordinary uh, income tax on the distributions that are required to come out within an inherited IRA. Um, it's a major benefit to your intended beneficiaries and kind of sets them up for success with retirement assets. Um, <clears throat> We can talk about that further um, the, the more we get involved in establishing your accounts 
and um, while competent in the financial planning um, arena, I am not formally trained or educated in estate planning law. We work with several estate planning attorneys locally and would be more than happy to share their information with you or even make a formal introduction. Um, some clients find this helpful that we communicate directly with, say, your attorney and us, and we keep you in the loop so that everybody's sort of up to speed and sharing the professional knowledge, which actually keeps your costs low. Um, please know that we have no profit sharing agreement or um, incentive to work with any professional and we hold our integrity and the trust that you place um, in us as in very high regard, um, providing you objective and professional planning advice only. Under no circumstance would I share any information that I've learned about you or your family or your business with a professional uh, without your complete authorization and consent or actual request. Um, so when you're ready to address your estate planning concerns and your needs, if I can be of assistance, I'd be happy to, um, and I can't wait to keep working together.